So today we're going to look at what I call the five all-star markets. These are the markets that have exceeded the thresholds of 5% annual rent growth, as well as 8% annual home value growth over the last 12 months. Now those growth thresholds would be impressive regardless of the time period we were in. However, over the last 12 months, we've had to deal with a pandemic and a recession. And in spite of those two things, these all-star markets have delivered superior returns. Let's dig into what they look like. All right, so now we have rent change on the x-axis. This is the growth rate and average rent in the market from September 2019 to September 2020. And then on the y-axis, we have the growth rate in home value over the same time period. The more the dots are clustered to the top right, the higher the rent growth and the value growth, the more to the bottom left, the lower the rent growth and the value growth. So. In particular, we can see New York on average has seen rent fall by 3%, but home value increase by 3%. Chicago has seen no change in rent and a 3% change in value. DC has seen a 1% decline in rent, a 6% increase in value. And by and large, most of the cities in this bottom left quadrant are bigger gateway markets. You also see Boston, you also see San Francisco. So these are the cities that have struggled the most over the last 12 months. Now you go to the top right of the chart and you look at the red dots. These are the all-star markets. These are on the other end of the spectrum from the gateway cities we just discussed. They're achieving really high rent growth above 5% and really high value growth above 8%. What are those markets? We have Syracuse, New York, plus 8% value, plus 7% rent. We have Memphis, Tennessee, plus 9% value, plus 7% rent. Tucson, Arizona, plus 10% value, plus 5% rent. Phoenix, Arizona, plus 12% value, plus 6% rent. And finally, Spokane, Washington, plus 12% value, plus 6% rent. So both in terms of delivering investors higher income via higher rent, as well as higher appreciation, these five markets have been the best in the country over the last 12 months. Now, an interesting question is, why are these markets doing so well? After all, they're kind of scattered throughout the country. Um, you have some, some Sunbelt markets in Phoenix and Tucson. Then you have um, you know, a typical Rust Belt market in Syracuse. And then you have a Pacific market in Spokane. What, what's, what's the unifying theme that's tying these markets together and how can real estate investors use those themes to potentially improve their investment strategy and selection going forward? This graph looks at the average rental rate in September 2020 across the 100 largest metro areas in the United States. At the top, it's San Francisco, San Jose, around $3,000 a month. Um, you have other markets like Ventura, California, New York, New York, Los Angeles, Boston, San Diego. So these are the markets where rent is really high and just not affordable. What's evident is that the five all-star markets are not present anywhere at the top of this chart. We have to scroll down all the way to number 40, Phoenix at 1500 a month to find the first all-star market. Scrolling down even further, finally we get Memphis at number 57 at 1374 a month in rent. Then we get Tucson at number 69, 1275 in rent. Spokane at 78, 1230 in rent. And then Syracuse, almost all the way towards the bottom at number 95, barely over $1,000 in rent. So all of these markets, these all-star markets are affordable. Why does affordability matter? Well, at some point, it gets harder and harder to grow rent and value if your price point's higher. Uh, at some point, you're just pricing yourself out of what renters and homeowners can afford. So the more affordable that markets are, the more potential upside, both in rent growth and appreciation that they have. Now there's another characteristic that these markets all share, and that's a lack of a large supply pipeline. Everyone likes to typically focus on the demand side of the equation for real estate, 
how many people are moving to a city, how much money are they making, but the supply side is just as important. You could have the best demand fundamentals out there, yet if you're delivering a huge pipeline of supply, it's gonna be difficult to grow rent and value. This graph is looking at the supply pipeline of new apartment units and for sale homes across different metro areas in the US. Uh, the lines highlighted in red are our all-star metros and the lines in green, Austin, Nashville, and Raleigh, uh, give some context for how different the permitting supply pipeline looks across the country. Now, if you go back to 2010, these markets were all fairly close in their permitting supply pipeline. Austin, Raleigh, Spokane, Nashville, Phoenix, Memphis, and Tucson, they were all between about 0.5% to 1.2% of housing stock being permitted each year. But as the decade went along, these gray lines, Raleigh, Nashville, and Austin, just started really separating themselves from the all-star metros in how many new units they were permitting. So for instance, in 2020, Austin is on pace to permit almost 4.5% growth in its housing stock. Nashville at three, Raleigh at 2.8. You go down to Syracuse, Syracuse is at 0.1% permitting supply expansion. Memphis is at 0.9, Tucson's at 1.0, Spokane's at 1.4, and Phoenix is at 2.2. So these all-star metros have low supply pipelines, both today and going back 10 years, relative to some of these other growth, more popular growth markets like Austin, Nashville, and Raleigh. Most investors probably wouldn't have predicted that it'd be markets like Syracuse, Memphis, and Tucson that are topping the rent growth and appreciation lists in 2020. This is probably an indication that the real estate world should start looking at markets that aren't as, say, sexy or popular with more of an open mind. Because if you maintain affordability and a limited supply pipeline, you're gonna create an environment that favors rent growth and appreciation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them. And if there's any markets you'd like me to explore in a future video, please let me know. Until then, this is Nick from ReVenture Consulting signing off.